and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, you're very welcome. My name is Dr Cat, and this is Reading the Past. Today's video is a reaction video. As I'm now a fully fledged YouTuber, I think it's only fair that I sip and spill the proverbial tea about the place. The tea in question today is an article that I found while I was, well, frankly, on a mammoth procrastination session this afternoon. The article comes from the Somerset County Gazette and they report that Alexander War, grandson of the novelist Evelyn, author of Brideshead Revisited, claims that he has proof that the Earl of Oxford is the true author of the plays and sonnets attributed to William Shakespeare. Now, I'm not going to do a deep dive on the authorship debate in all of its many facets because, frankly, there are enough videos and articles and books to sink a ship. A particularly good one is James Shapiro's Contested Will, if you want to go and have a look at that. What I'm interested in exploring with you is just why we ask the question. Why are we so concerned about the authorship of these plays and sonnets? And why do the two groups in question approach each other with such a vehemence in their arguments. To me, the authorship debate is in some ways symptomatic of the way in which we all approach Shakespeare. There is a part of us all, I think, that sees him as this monolithic, unquestionable genius, a man whose work speaks to us across the ages, whose characters feel as real as family members, who is able to communicate across time in a way that no author before or since was able to. But then there's also, I think, in all of us, that iconoclast that wants to tear him off of his pillar or plinth, look him in the eyes and say, well, do you know what? You're not that great, actually. What I think is interesting is the way in which the two groups approach these arguments and approach one another. I wonder why the Stratfordians, the people who believe that William Shakespeare, the man from Stratford, the son of a glover, is the true author of the plays and poems attributed to him, why they are so reticent and dismissive of people who question the authorship. Now, on the one hand, I of course understand that it can be quite frustrating to be asked the same question time and time again. There is a part of me that thinks that in refusing to engage, they don't help the situation. Because if you are looking for a conspiracy, and the people who sit in the ivory tower, the people who go with the status quo and support it, if they won't engage with you, if they shut you down, if they make you sound mad or ill-educated, if they are patronising or dismissive, if that is what happens and you're already conspiracy-minded, you aren't going to let it drop. In fact, that behaviour may just prove your point a little bit further. Similarly, on the other side, the people who are anti-Stratfordian see in the academy, in the universities, a reticence to discuss the authorship debate because in their minds there is a vested interest to keep the Shakespeare machine moving along nicely. There is a belief that if the authorship was proven to be anybody other than Shakespeare, careers would be ruined. Well, I can speak from my own experience. I have worked on Shakespeare. The plays feature in my doctoral thesis. But I have to say, if tomorrow I woke up and I was confronted with the news that something had come to light that proved that the Earl of Oxford or Christopher Marlowe or Elizabeth I or indeed any other person in the litany of that list who has been named as a potential author. If tomorrow I woke up and it was irrefutably proven that one of them was the true author of the plays and poems, would it mean that my research and my work was now meaningless? No, it wouldn't. And I think for a lot of people that's the case because 
For your work to be meaningless, the work you were doing on the plays would have to be based on Shakespeare's biography. It only matters in terms of the validity of your work if you are so resolute in your interpretation of the plays through the life and experiences of William Shakespeare, the man from Stratford, the son of a glover. Now, where that falls down is we know so very little about him and his biography. It's patchy at best. And while there have been great biographies written on Shakespeare attempting to piece those bits together, it's really not realistic for many people to be reading and interpreting and doing academic work on the plays that's based solely on the Shakespeare biography. For me, the most effective way of reading those plays and poems is through the culture, the society, the politics, the religious upheaval, the medical understanding. All of those things are far more useful to me as a reader of those plays and poems than the biography ever would be. I do want to say one thing. For me, it is quite telling that these questions emerged in the mid 19th century. And for that reason, they speak a lot more to the mindset of those people than they do to the authorship of the plays. The biggest argument that is made against William Shakespeare, son of a glover, the man from Stratford, being the author of the plays is that the anti-Stratfordians feel that he is incapable of creating those works. That this boy who lacked the education of a nobleman like the Earl of Oxford or Queen Elizabeth or even his fellow playwright, the university educated Christopher Marlowe or Ben Jonson, this man is incapable of writing the works that are attributed to William Shakespeare. And I wonder why the mid 19th century, as we have the ideas of phrenology and the burgeonings of psychology, and also the first inklings of something approaching eugenics, why this community is the community that breeds a notion that somebody would be incapable of creating these plays based on their social standing and their educational attainment. I think it says a lot more about Victorian England than it does about William Shakespeare, son of a glover, the man from Stratford. What I will say is that I don't think that any question shouldn't be asked. I don't think we should ever have a situation where anything is off limits to be interrogated. And I also think we set up a dangerous precedent when somebody voices even a well-worn argument that we disagree with. It's quite dangerous to belittle or patronise or mock that questioner for many reasons, but mostly because it's just not very nice. So if you don't think that William Shakespeare, the son of a cluffer, the man from Stratford, if you don't think that he is the author of those plays and poems, it's not my job to convince you. I can disagree, we can be respectful about it, we can even have a discussion in the comments section down below. That's a space right there where you can have that debate and I might well weigh in. But for me, the debate itself is the interesting thing and I hope you agree. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please give it a like, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you know when I'm next uploading. I'm gonna leave the links to my social media so you can come and find me over there as well. I really look forward to seeing you all next time, but for now, take care and bye-bye.